Welcome once again to ExplainingComputers.com. In recent videos, I've fitted a fan and a heatsink to a Raspberry Pi 3, and with some success. However, I'd still like to come up with a really good passive cooling solution, and so in this video, I'm going to try a bit more computing DIY. In previous Raspberry Pi 3 cooling videos, I've added this off-the-shelf heatsink to the top of my Raspberry Pi 3. This adds about a gram of aluminium to the top of the Pi's system on a chip, but uh, as we've seen, the effect on cooling is quite minimal. I'm therefore going to try and fit something more like this to the Pi. These are old heat sinks from various uh, graphics cards or PCs or something like that. I'd kind of hope these were copper, but this one is uh, definitely andite aluminium. You can probably see the aluminium coming through there on the end. And this one, I think, it might be brass. I don't know. Maybe it's also andite aluminium. It certainly isn't uh, copper. But still, they're clearly massively bigger than this uh, tiny little Raspberry Pi heatsink. So our challenge is to fit these to the Pi. Now, I'd initially thought I'd probably go with this one, cut off the, uh, the lugs on the end there, cut off, cut off these things, and it would sort of fit in something a bit like this, sort of pointing up on the Pi. That was a distinct possibility. But in fact, I've decided this is probably a better bet. This will actually drop in there, uh, and that's hopefully going to be how we have a heatsink on the Pi. Now, of course, this isn't ideal. This uh, wobbles, and of course it wobbles because it isn't actually sitting flat on top of the, the system on a chip. It's also hitting other components on the board, and therefore we can't just uh, dump some thermal compound on here, dump on that heatsink, and hope to use things like this. We need to have a secret weapon. And my secret weapon here is going to be this. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it Superman? No, this is actually a piece of copper. I went onto Amazon, I searched for a copper plate, and I found this uh, three millimeter thick sheet of uh, copper. This is a 50 by 50 mil by a three mil thick. This cost me a grand total of uh, £3.54, I suppose just under $5. So what I'm going to do is to take the pie, take off the heat sink, and I'm going to cut myself a piece of this uh, copper so it'll fit on top of the pie system on the chip, and then we can put the heat sink, hopefully, on top of that. So next thing we need to do is to take this and to do a, a little bit of cutting. And here we are, here's our final piece of a very shiny copper, which I've uh, cleaned up with a file a little bit on the edges and also cleaned both of the flat surfaces with alcohol so it's going to have a really good adhesion to our, our thermal compound. And I find it fascinating actually to compare this to the uh, other Raspberry Pi heatsink, the main difference being, yes I've cut this one a bit bigger, but it is probably five times the weight of this one, it's a massive metal going on top of our Pi 3's processor. So let's bring in the uh, Pi 3, get it roughly uh, in place in shot. We could just drop this directly on top, nice resounding little click there, and it fits beautifully flat. That's why I've got the three mil copper rather than some thinner sheets and put them together. But I am going to be extra cautious, and I've made myself therefore this little piece of plastic, which hopefully you can just see glinting there. This piece of plastic's got a hole in the middle, and it fits around the processor there, just drops in, that's nice and loose around the edge of it, and that just means I can be absolutely certain I'm not getting any shorts. The processors stand proud of that plastic, and this will stand free on the top of that. Still moves around, the plastic is still loose underneath. You can probably just about see. So that means I'm not going to get any problems shorting out anything on the ply, on the pyre, fitting this piece of copper. So we need to make that fit in place. You'll see I've cut it bigger than the chip. I thought I might as well get a maximum amount of metal in there. And I've put myself some marks on the plastic so I can work out where to drop this on. So I'm now going to take some uh, Arctic MX4, nice little bit of thermal compound, and put a tiny little bit on the top of the pies processor. I think that'll, ew, that's probably too much actually, but um, we will go with that and we'll let that whiz itself around underneath. That should smooth out very, very, very well. Oh, I can feel it going round and round and round and round, skirting around. That's nicely on the top of the pie. And there we are, we have our um, P3 
piece of copper placed on top of the pie. So, we've now got to the exciting point where we can put all of this finally together. We've got the pie there with its uh, copper on top, but we need to actually fit the uh, broader heatsink on top of that. So, what I've done, as in my uh, previous video, I'm going to put the pie on a little board like this. So this board needs a few bolts through it. There we have our little board, and we'll use our bits of uh, plastic pipe. There we are, and the pie can now drop on top of that. There we are, the pie is now nice and happy. We'll now put on our second layer of pipes. There we are, and uh, as in the last video, I've cut a top out of Perspex, which will fit, hopefully if I got it right, across the top of those and fit in. It will, it'll fit very nicely. And if I've got it right, it'll also take the uh, heat sink that way on like that, and it'll fit also on there. But before we do that, I need to just put on the um, washers and the uh, nuts on top of these uh, screws. There we are. As a usual, hand tights fitted that perfectly well, and we can now fit in our uh, heat sink. So we'll get a bit more of the uh, Arctic uh, compound, a little bit on top of the heat sink here. Just needs a little bit. Um, probably the better size this time. And we will take the heat sink and drop it in the top of here, like this. We haven't got the opportunity to move. Oh, I can feel it moving around under there, hopefully making good thermal contact. And there we are, we have our uh, heat sink fitted onto the pipe. Now, of course, there's nothing actually holding everything in place here on this. So what I'm now going to do is just to put a little bit of a hot glue around the edge of that heat sink to hold everything permanently in place. And uh, here we go, Mr. Happy, happy hot glue, happy, happy hot glue, happy man. Strikes again, uh, holding in there. Probably gets a bit stringy, but there we are. And with hot glue applied on all sides, we have our final pie with its uh, rather large passive heatsink. That looks like it's going to work very well indeed. But of course, just because it looks cool doesn't mean it'll run cool, and so now it's time to do some temperature tests. Right, well here we are with our Raspberry Pi with its new heatsink all connected up and working, and we're going to run a temperature test. I'm here in Raspbian, and if you've not seen some of the previous videos, what I'm going to run is this bash script. And this basically takes a temperature measurement, it then uses suspense to stress out the processor cores to maximum for about two minutes, it takes another reading, it does it again, etc. So we get about a 10 minute test with temperature readings taken start and end and every two minutes. So I'll go to our terminal and I'll start off the test. There we are, we're starting with an idle temperature down at a 35.9 degrees. Obviously I won't run this through in um, real time, so I'll now leap into high speed and we'll see what measurements we come up with. And there we are, it's finished, and some uh, really impressive results. I'm very, very pleased with that. If we look at those results compared to some of the others we've done in, in previous videos, if we had nothing on the pie, no heatsink at all, these are the numbers I got running the test today. So you can see clearly a massive change, We're knocking 30 degrees off with our uh, extreme passive uh, heatsink solution. If we compare it to the uh, regular pie heatsink I showed you earlier, these are the results from last time I did this in, in a previous video. It's got a slightly higher idle here, I think, but even so, as you can see again, the tiny heatsink did very little. Our heatsink here is doing really well. If we look at what happened when we had the uh, fan and the regular heat sink in the previous video, these were results with our active cooling solution, which I thought weren't bad. We were holding to about 60 degrees, but here we're holding to about 50 degrees, which is fantastic. And finally, you might be thinking to yourselves, what if I just added the copper? Because the copper slab itself was quite big and heavy, so I ran that test before I actually fitted things on top, and this is the results 
just with the copper. As you can see, it has to have the veins on top to have a real impact on the temperature. So there we are, a very uh, pleasing set of results. I've found I can get my Pi coolest using this extreme passive cooling solution. After three videos, my Raspberry Pi 3 cooling experiments have now come to an end, at least for now. But of course, they do lay the foundation for some future experiments in Raspberry Pi 3 overclocking. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon. Hey.